Hello okay. and welcome to this edition of uh, Manthan. And uh, we are having a very, very interesting subject for discussion today. The uh, topic for discussion is Devale and the cause and impact of its destruction in the Indian society. This is a subject which I think deserves more attention than it has received till now. And there have been very few people who've been uh, actually working in that uh, space, collecting the knowledge of the past, correlating with it with the current situation and trying to look for some kind of a solution. And for that, we have um, Mr. Sandeep Balakrishna with us. Uh, Sandeep uh, is uh, originally an IT uh, professional who has, after 17 years of professional experience in world-class organizations like Honeywell and Cisco, uh, he has taken to writing uh, columns, books, translations, commenting, speaking, and functioning as an independent scholar. Now, that's, that's quite a bit that he does. And uh, some of his books are very, very interesting to read. I did go through a part of uh, his book on Tipu Sultan. Uh, and uh, he has also done a translation of uh, an acclaimed Kannada novel called Avaran uh, into English which is in its sixth reprint now in an age of uh, uh, less reading and more uh, uh, discussions i think sixth reprint of a book uh, justifies the quality of the uh, translation itself so he's also an invited speaker on many areas so sandeep welcome to the show and thanks for having accepted the invitation uh, we really feel honored at Bharat Satsang for this uh, kind gesture of yours. Uh, I would uh, start with, uh, with, with the most common question uh, that uh, I think everyone would be wanting to know. Uh, what was the significance of the color in the Sanatan Samaj? Before we understand what is the significance today, Let's first try to understand what was originally the significance of Devale and uh, how we have lost it on the way. Right. Uh, at the outset, thank you very much, uh, Shashanji and uh, all the wonderful team uh, at your organization uh, who's doing some good work in this area. A much neglected uh, work, but uh, you know, a much needed work. So, and you've been rather uh, generous in your introduction about me, I should say. <laughs> so anyway, thanks once again. It's a great honor. Uh, let me begin by, uh, you know, before uh, understanding uh, uh, the role and significance um, that temples played and continue to play in the uh, Hindu Indian uh, society, we'll, uh, you know, uh, begin at the beginning in the sense that... Uh, um, what is a fundamental, what lies behind the uh, fundamental notion of temples? So if I can uh, uh, take about three or four minutes to say that. If you look at the conception and the origin and how uh, temples evolved, uh, today and, and not just today, but uh, uh, over the last uh, at least 1500 years, uh, you know, temples uh, have evolved largely as uh, physical and architectural uh, structures with great scope for expressing uh, creativity, art, and uh, other allied uh, expressions of uh, uh, human creativity. So behind all this is a very simple uh, uh, fact. Temples represent one of the finest, uh, they represent one of the deepest and grandest and also one of the most profound expressions of the innate human spirit. This is a spirit uh, uh, which is very hard to kind of uh, you know, quantify in today's uh, overtly materialistic and uh, uh, essentially a world driven by machines, which is technology. 
so if you look at it from that perspective temples are one of the most profound expressions of this uh, human spirit of awe of wonderment and it is a timeless yearning for spirituality philosophy and art so when all these are given physical expressions they become temples in say uh, stone wood uh, earlier temples used to be constructed in wood right so when you look at this <coughs> uh, you notice different forms of temples in almost all ancient civilizations including the minoan civilization greek civilization uh, egyptian roman chinese inca maya and uh, uh, obviously uh, the bharatiya civilization uh, all of us uh, in fact especially when we go to these uh, 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 fabulous and you know timeless old temples uh, you are immediately struck by this uh, uh, you know sense of this spiritual yearning right uh, uh, there is a uh, what do you call uh, uh, unquantifiable uh, experience of uh, belonging to something uh, uh, sacred right so but then uh, what is also important here is that almost no temple of non indian civilizations that is ancient non indian civilizations none of them almost none of them survives today uh, thanks largely to the destructive encounter with christianity and islam right uh, so uh, from there i'll move on to quickly to uh, discussing the role significance and the preeminence of hindu temples which becomes abundantly clear when you regard uh, these temples uh, in the light of our history i mean india is the oldest non abrahamic surviving religion right surviving almost intact so uh, if you look at the word uh, temple the origin of the root of the word temple in uh, sanskrit and other indian languages uh, they are known as variously known as uh, devalaya devasthanam alayam mandir uh, kovela in, uh, in telugu koil in tamil and so on if you look at the etymology of devalaya we can derive it like this okay it is devasya alayaha or devanam alayaha which means it is a place uh, where uh, resides light sport victory transaction prayer prayer in the sense of stuti joy bliss dream beauty and dynamism and uh, you know several other such uh, meanings can be derived from that so now if you look at the pre christian uh, western civilizations they developed the temple culture that is uh, pre christian western civilizations including greek and rome <clears throat> sorry uh, these civilizations developed a temple culture largely as places for public congregation for div uh, uh, divination and uh, augury uh, and this was a limited purpose there in those civilizations but then it was only in india where it was elevated uh, in an all encompassing sense for example if you take the english word temple which means uh, the location spanning the two sides of your uh, forehead uh, so if you look at the forehead it is obviously flat and it is a temples that kind of support it at both sides so it resembles a sacred altar right like a platform like an altar so in the uh, indian conception the entire body itself is a temple it is regarded as a temple uh, and for example you can look at uh, you know some uh, brief shlokas like deha devalayah proktah jivo devasanatanah and hridaya tad vijaniyat vishvasya yatanam mahat and i mean you can uh, uh, derive all these uh, directly from the vedas uh, now i'll i'll regard uh, the temple the body as a temple and see what all we can derive from there now the feet become the main doors of the temple the reproductive organ becomes the dhvajastamba the stomach becomes the balipitha the heart <coughs> i'm sorry the heart becomes the navaranga the neck becomes the sukanasi and the head becomes a garbhagriha so at once what you can also see is that a temple represents and it encompasses all the three stages or stara called adibhuta adidaiva and adhyatma right so from this uh, 
I will come to what is uh, uh, known as the Devalaya ecosystem, which will uh, answer your question as to you know how uh, what was the role of uh, temples in our society and civilization. So, from whatever I just discussed, all these conceptions when they began to be translated uh, as temples in real life, as physical structures, physical spaces. What happened was that it gradually led to the evolution of what I will call as a Devalaya or temple ecosystem. So a Devalaya ecosystem is a cultural uh, and a social accomplishment and it is a civilizational peak which is unparalleled anywhere in human history. Hmm. You just regard this, look at how many countries are there in the world today and across the vast geography across all the continents, uh, it is very evident, right, that no such uh, uh, accomplishment no, uh, has been uh, done by any other non-Indian or non-Hindu civilization. Now, you can also observe the fact that even today, somewhere in India or even uh, in this globalized world, somewhere in the world, uh, either an old temple and uh, either a new temple is being built or some other old temple is being renovated in some or the other corner of India. So what does this tell you? It is the greatest evidence that uh, to show the not only the endurance and longevity of uh, the roots of this temple culture, but it is also an imminent proof that as long as Sanatana Dharma survives in the world, it will invariably find its expression in temples. Hindus simply cannot live without building temples. And uh, I will, I don't mind repeating this even a million times. Hindus simply cannot live without building temples, right? So now uh, you can look at this as, uh, you know, the Devara ecosystem from another perspective. Uh, this is a perspective of the Trigunas, which uh, is well known. Sattva, uh, Rajas and Tamas. Sattva is balance, serenity, etc. Spirituality, etc. Uh, Rajas is activity, passion, vigor, etc and tamas is uh, laziness and stupor. So from this perspective, a temple is the purest architectural, sculptural and artistic embodiment of the sattva guna. So sattva guna by itself, it does nothing. It doesn't take any action. It doesn't you know, provide any direction. But by its mere existence, sattva guna inspires, it motivates, it guides all noble human endeavors in multiple fields and multiple realms. So a temple or devalaya thus becomes a pillar as well as a rest house uh, which supports, which accommodates and which enables the attainment of dharma and fulfilling the various duties and activities related to artha. I'll explain this uh, uh, in a slightly detailed fashion. Now let's uh, regard the, uh, let's take the realm of dharma. So as a uh, from the in the realm of dharma a temple or devalaya is the place to perform acharas which is customs ceremonies rituals etc some of these acharas include uh, 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 what's known as namakarna or naming ceremony akshara abhyasam uh, vivaha marriage and so on yeah these uh, these ceremonies these acharas are part of an individual discharging his or her dharmic duties now, in the realm of the community, a temple or devalaya is the place for conducting, for example, mass marriages, utsavas, jatras, uh, for doing anadanam and other community or society related celebrations. There is a reason even every secular politician today will advertise his or her, uh, you know, mm -hmm. achievement as performing X number of mass marriages. Why number of Annadanams? There is a reason for this. This is that reason. Correct. It is deeply embedded there in your DNA, no matter how secular you are. Right? So, in fact, not too long ago, uh, the temple was also the place where justice was dispensed. Uh, this is seen today in Dharmasthala in Karnataka today, uh, where uh, 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 the Hegade there, Virendra Hegade there, acts as the uh, judge. Now, on the plane of the Adhidaivika or the uh, divine or the spiritual plane, we can uh, consider the deity, any, it could be any deity, right? Consider the deity of Vastu Shastra, whose name is Vishwakarma. Hmm. 
his son his uh, he had nine sons which included uh, you know people like um, there was a guy called uh, malakara a darukara a kuvindaka uh, a kumbakara a sutradara and others now this this is extremely symbolic because each of these uh, names that i listed out they are all the sons of uh, vishwakarma so each of them respect uh, represent a specific profession for example malakara is a garment garland maker darukara is a carpenter kuvindaka is a weaver kumbakara is a potter sutradara you know uh, uh, is a uh, sorry sutradara is a garland maker and of course there are other professions like uh, uh, the potter sculptor farmer chef runner or messenger singer artisan accountant and numerous other professions so in other words what we do, we do not fail to notice here in all this list how these professions are sanctified by making them the descendants of a uh, deity itself right every profession had its rightful place and every professional could make a living through honest labor by depending on the temple mm. so when you look at this uh, it is equally clear how all of these professions make up an entire economic system which is both originated in and supported solely by a temple so therefore it is precisely for this reason that we observe uh, you know for example uh, you can regard any temple town across bharatavarsha which has stood the test of time could be kashi it could be mathura it could be kanchi chidambaram tirumala tirupati madurai palani pandarapur badrinath puri right and, uh, the, the list is nearly you know humongous so what do we see in all these temple towns the same thing so uh, we'll also consider another tang tang tangential face it out here for example any danam that uh, that we give like any donation or any endowment or gift uh, that is given to a temple it becomes what is known as devaswa mm-hmm. or the property of the deity over which nobody including the donor and including the king nobody has a right except the deity so you look at this uh, consider this fact that what what a superb uh, uh, superbly well thought out system of checks and balances that had uh, that were implemented by just uh, using this method of uh, devaswa right now if you look right. at uh, for example how deep rooted this is uh, the kerala temple uh, administration could be any temple is known as devaswom so you see the cultural unity here right hmm. now uh, what i will uh, do is i'll quickly read out a very nice description of uh, uh, the various facets of the devalaya ecosystem uh, which is uh, given by one uh, uh, dr s shrikanta shastri is a, a extremely famous uh, scholar of uh, uh, who lived between the uh, late 19th century and mid 20th century so i'll just read this out verbatim temples occupied a prominent place from the perspective of education fine arts uh, they reflected the economic condition of the kingdom and social service thus people had a firm f- uh, belief and faith in the pious act of donating to temples these donors included everybody from the monarch to the most ordinary citizen temples were governed and maintained by a duly elected board they distributed money food grain and seeds to the farmers from the deity's treasury temples were also engaged in money lending temples conducted various celebrations like uh, pakshotsava uh, which is a fortnightly utsava masotsava which is a monthly uh, utsava brahmotsava and annual utsava and uh, temples oversaw the distribution of the harvest derived from temple lands that is lands which were donated to temples theater and dance halls organized dramas during the utsava days in both sanskrit and desha bhashas music and dance recitals offered as seva for the deity immensely enriched art forms like classical music uh, say bharatnatyam vastu shilpa which is sculpture art moral and spiritual discourses by learned scholars yatis uh, uh, gurus and other such uh, eminent people were drawn from the vedic and puranic uh, literature thereby instilling and reinforcing dharma among the pilgrims and other people who visited the temple hmm. 
there were also lecture halls for imparting higher education in the veda vedanga medicine ayurveda and other subjects by teachers and scholars employed by the temple students were given free scholarship and board, boarding and lodging massive temples were securely built like fortresses and they contained an abundance of food grain water and other supplies and provided shelter to refugees during war time because hindu kings regarded temples as sacred spaces uh, they refrained from harming or uh, spoiling them even slightly and so uh, so sacred was regarded that this caution even if they uh, this caution often meant that they were they were certainly going to be defeated in war so uh, this this is what uh, dr shrikanth shastri says so now as with most facets of hindu culture and society temples also show a remarkable sense of unbroken continuity and cultural unity in the sense that they are still a living memory right now uh, the majestic somanatha temple uh, in uh, somnath gujarat which was rebuilt in 1951 is a great testimony to this inherited heritage of knowledge traditions and rituals which were preserved intact even after hundreds of years uh, after its uh, after it was repeatedly destroyed and after alien rule was imposed in india similarly many of the ancient temple towns that have also survived uh, brutal shocks but still continue to thrive they also represent the same facet of cultural and civilizational continuity right right so this much is uh, uh, what is the role of uh, you know uh, devalayas and the temple ecosystem i hope uh, that answers your question yeah i mean uh, it's a, a very very effective narration of uh, what exactly i wanted to understand mm. but given that i mean uh, i was trying to figure, imagine myself in an earlier era coming in as an invader mm-hmm. and uh, possibly with this kind of an ecosystem prevailing in a country which is full of um, very great prosperity mm-hmm. i think the temple would be the first place that i would attack i mean is that the reason why all succeeding invaders have invariably uh, tried to attack on the temples and demolish temples and the ecosystem altogether uh well if uh, you were an invader or i was an invader uh an abrahamic invader i would see no reason uh, rather a non abrahamic invader right i would see no reason to destroy temples right it would make all the more sense for me to take them over peacefully hmm. you know restore the um, uh, leave that thing uh, intact instead of destroying them right so uh, as it is well known why temples were destroyed first uh, uh, by muslim invasions was because of their religious injunctions so this uh, their religion mandates them to destroy idols and all places that have idol worship right it is called but in uh, uh, arabic if i'm not uh, mistaken but means an idol so all places of uh, you know idol worship had to be destroyed if you are a pious muslim right yeah. so uh now uh, that i we know that uh, most of the temples in india mm-hmm. um, are in a very uh, very great control of the government and those uh, those uh, temples which are there uh, they need a lot of uh, resuscitation mm-hmm. uh, i would say to make them Uh, regain some of the past glory mm-hmm. and and then there are temples which have been uh, di- uh, I mean destroyed and are in a dilapidated state especially in states of kashmir and other places so what exactly do you think the administrators the educationists the judiciary and the common people do mm-hmm. to uh, get at least if not complete but at least partial glory back for these temples uh well actually i have to address this question from uh, multiple perspectives uh the first thing is that uh, uh 
if you have to i am not a big proponent of you know reviving past glory uh, because you know you you will be stuck in a sort of a time warp they were right. glorious for a reason because they had a ecosystem uh, they had a society and a government and a what do you call a general social outlook right which made this glory possible now in today especially after india adopted democracy i should say or uh, roughly even after the british kind of uh, introduced their education that social structure has been uh, you know slowly steadily and even at sometimes uh, some points in time even rapidly eroding right so now if you look at any temple right it is sustained by the community right and that community is in turn sustained by you know protected by government which understands the value of uh, what a temple stands for now unless uh, you know you can achieve only so far so much by uh, you know litigation and uh, uh, you know movements i'm not i'm not uh, this is an argument it is not an argument against that but the point is uh, now look for instance uh, the sari for uh, the clothes rather clothing for uh, Uh, Lord Balaji or Vintage Farine Trupati comes from a uh, business house called Nali Silks, which is fairly famous in uh, uh, South India. Yeah. Right now, why? What, give me one reason why Nali Silks only should uh, send the sari to the god there. So this is an endowment that has come from ages, right? Mm. And you had a society that respected all these things. Now the backbone of this society. uh that sees this kind of intrinsic value in a temple tradition is gone we have broken that social uh, uh backbone of the hindu society right so even if you kind of say free it from government temple the question will arise is that can you completely stop temples from being corrupt, uh, temple administrators from being corrupt right right so now you also have all these uh, you know great temples of the past who uh, who have more or less preserved their inscriptions endowments and uh, all these kinds of things right so these documentation to read them and understand them you hardly have anybody today who yes. who who's trained i mean this requires special training to decipher yes. them and understand them mm-hmm. right so you look at all this chain reaction right so one thing is linked to the other so even if one link in the chain is broken the entire thing collapses which is exactly mm-hmm. what has happened okay so how do you uh, what do you recommend for uh, getting out of this morass no no very simple like anything you should have a government and i i make no bones about saying this which is which should be a hindu government which should understand this the value of, of this thing so because unless this is gone today you are uh, looking at this uh, news of some uh, Uh, Ishwara Temple being forcibly taken over by uh, Christians, and Christians. this is the Hindus are going in jail. Yeah. So why does this happen? You have allowed this to happen. Mm. Ah, okay, okay. One or two temples will take over today, mm. and then one week later, some other temple you take over today. Then force them out, impoverish the temples, impoverish the priests. You know, mm. why should an IAS administrator officer sit on the administration board of a temple? Mm. But this was never the case. Mm-hmm. because everybody out there uh, the, there is a reason they have been preserved for intact for uh, such a hundreds of years of uh, uh, you know history mm-hmm. right because everybody understood the value they felt an innately uh, innate sense of sanctity towards the temple right you don't have that anymore i'm not saying uh, nobody has it but the point is that innate sense of uh, sense of sanctity is gone mm Now, all these big temples, right? Why are they so filthy? Mm-hmm. Why are yeah. they so filthy? It, it, it <laughs> is a yeah. So it's the Hindus who are creating that filth there. So mm-hmm. this is not this is not a comment uh, against their bhakti or whatever. But mm-hmm. you can't you can't be selective about you know. Uh, okay, I'll take I'll maintain only this much in the temple. Rest mm-hmm. I'll disregard. Mm-hmm. Like I said, these are all links that go to make up that chain. Mm-hmm. Right? Why? Why should I say, for example, Puri Jagannath Temple? It is unbelievably dirty. Yes. Right. So mm-hmm. the external cleanliness and hygiene plays a 
if if these temples if hindus consider these temples as such sacred spaces at least show it in uh, by maintaining them you know uh, in a clean fashion right hmm. and it doesn't take much i mean it doesn't take much at all it doesn't yeah, take anything uh, at all actually one juxtaposition that immediately comes to my mind hmm. go to any gurudwara hmm. absolutely spick and span correct absolutely dust free yes and that and that is done by voluntary services not, not, yeah. not yeah. by any kind of uh, no enforcement no, no yeah. enforcement at all hmm. so i i think and and uh, i think the social services that a uh, gurudwara does hmm. uh, is almost uh, an extension of what a temple used to do in earlier times absolutely absolutely right. gurudwara was also evolved from a uh, temple from a tradition. temple concept only yeah, yeah. but they have preserved the uh, cleanliness and yeah. other things yes, yes. which so, i think yeah. that, that that has to be inculcated by the hindu yeah. people also absolutely so how do you i mean uh, from where do you get your uh, bhakti when 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 the whole place is stinking right you want to get out of the place do your namaskara and get out of the place as soon as possible and then then that namaskara also becomes out of a selfish greed of Egg, uh, getting some uh, reward from the lord uh, precisely so correct so <laughs> there you go so you have destroyed the innate sense of sanctity that is within each of us yes right you either you either go there to beg for something or bribe the god for something or you know uh generally to soothe your uh, uh, guilty conscience yes so so uh, what it ultimately proves is that any degeneration or degradation of uh, devale mm -hmm. is essentially a symbol of of a degradation in the people uh, in not being able to uh, sustain the sanctity of the place absolutely absolutely so what has happened is you look at uh, see how all these things are interrelated now earlier uh, not earlier not not far to, uh, even just 50 years ago for example 50 60 years ago every village had some clearly demarcated uh, sense of social harmony mm -hmm. you had a village elder a wise person right uh, who would you know take care of uh, troubled families and you know offer them words of wisdom advice right uh, during utsavas and all that so it ensured a social cohesion what has happened now all those wise people are gone they have either been uh, forced to move to the city so who else is left there <laughs> why have our villages become they have become hotbeds of uh, caste politics nothing yes. else yes politics and land grabbing land grabbing in activity yeah. out there yeah so why does this happen because of this yeah so like i said all these things that is why you have to be very careful in you know uh, before embarking on these uh, one size fits all approach of uh, so called liberating temples before you you don't need to liberate temples unless you kind of first build the groundwork revive the ground base that is that will automatically take care of restoring these temples right right I mean, nothing acts like a uh, social pressure now when you have some 50000 people saying that we want this temple to be like this all this nonsense should stop right now mm. which government will do anything who can oppose this absolutely wonderful so, thought wonderful so this, this social cohesion is what is important right thank you sandeep thank you for being right. with us it's been yeah. a pleasure talking to you likewise right and uh, i think we will continue to discuss about uh, uh, so many things ancient mm. and its mm. extension to mm. the modernity uh, mm. and i, I would uh, actually be in touch with you for further sessions on various other topics i know that you are also interested in the various um, uh, dynasties and the history you can call it history, history you can call it i don't know mm. call it history again history is a high word <laughs> but anyway so we would be exploring into the past of the nation uh, in greater detail at times and thank you for coming here. excellent sir my honor and my great pleasure i hope it was useful yeah yeah definitely okay sir thank you yeah bye